हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश गौतम फ्रॉम डॉक्टर हरि सिंह विश्वविद्यालय सागर मध्य प्रदेश टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ मॉड्यूल इंटाइटल सोशल स्टेटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम द पेपर इंटाइटल सोशियो कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी सो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल you will come to know what is social stratification how the society has stratified in different strata regions behind this kind of stratification why such kind of stratification exist in society types of stratification how many types of stratifications are around the globe and finally we will also understand different theories of stratification so let first we start with what is social stratification social stratification is a particular form of inequality which refers to the presence of social groups which are ranked one above the other usually in terms of the amount of power prestige wealth their members possesses it is important to make a difference between social inequality and social stratification the term social inequality implies simply refers to existence of socially created inequalities those who belong to a particular group or stratum will have some awareness of common identity they will share a similar lifestyle which to some degree will distinguish them from members of other social strata social stratification can be of various type but the rank and hierarchy are the common form of stratification the notion of rank hierarchy and stratification are not same but they share something in common rank means status in rank status may be ascribed on the basis of descent from heredity in many of the simpler societies person belonging to certain line of descent are regarded as superior to others and are entitled to receive some form of respect and may sometimes have other privileges the rarest case of such differentiation by rank is that of royal families the descendants of king and chiefs a society may be simply divided into royal or nobles and commoners but there may be much more elaborate ranking systems hierarchy is another form of social stratification which means the relationship of authority and obedience superiority and subordination while rank in itself simply implies status army is one of the best example of hierarchical structure an officer of higher rank can give order to any officer of lower rank this hierarchy is also maintained in different societies another form of social stratification we discuss here is based on caste and class hierarchical status ascribed in case of caste and achieved in case of class the most elaborate system of social stratification 
is that of Hindu caste system. The system is based on the idea of pollution. The idea is that the people who live in such a way as a as to avoid pollution have higher status than those who incur it. Certain substances are conceived as polluting and people whose occupation require them to handle these are of low caste. Every caste is called by the name of some occupation though only a minority of members of any caste follows the occupation after which it is called. Caste membership is hereditary and the pupils should not marry outside their own caste. According to Hindu theology, there are five divisions running through all societies. One is Brahmin or priest at the top, followed by Kshatriya, Vaishyas, who are traders. Then at the bottom, there are Shudras or servants who are untouchables. And the people who very touch or even their shadow is held to be polluting to members of higher caste. In practice, there are innumerable subdivisions of these castes which are ranked in different order in different localities. The cultural expression of the caste hierarchy is everywhere the same. Namely, that members of a higher caste or sub caste show their superiority by refusing to accept food from members of lower caste. Another example of a stratified society is that of class society described by sociologists mostly and is characterized by certain kind of division. This division is based on Karl Marx theory of class conflict. According to Marx, society is divided in two classes defined by their relationship to the means of production, machines and other means and the others are exploited by it. Marx identified a division of society into exploiters and the exploited at every historical period. The essential division of class in the technical sense and other divisions of stratified society is that division into classes are based on occupation and income. Whereas in African societies it is based on race. Of course, special occupations are assigned in practice to the member of different social strata in these societies too. But here status determines the occupation whereas in class system occupation determines status and in such a system there is more room for individuals to achieve a higher status than that of their parents. Dear students, to understand social stratification, we should know the theories of inequality without understanding theories of unequality, we could not understand properly the social stratification exist among different societies and why it exists. To understand all this aspect of social stratification, let me discuss about theories of inequalities. Many sociologists and anthropologists apply two kind of theories to analyze stratification. One hold that a high degree of inequality in the distribution of 
rewards and is necessary morally justified and beneficial to all members of society unless society offers an equal reward for unequal talent and efforts the most talented pupil will have no incentives to put their talents to work for the welfare of all this view is called functional theory so the functional theory holds that inequality is necessary for society to motivate its more resourceful and hard working members to perform its most important roles some roles require more skill and training than others the more the skill required to perform a role the fewer the number of qualified people to perform those those roles thus functionalist argue that unequal rewards are effective way to select most eligible persons to perform socially valuable roles then second theory is conflict theory the most theory uh, the conflict theory starts from the objections to the functionalism they claim that stratification is based on control over productive resources such as land labor and technology once the elites gain control over the resources they get other people to do the task that benefits them most this type of control varies between different kinds of economic system in ancient pre industrial states and chiefdoms the noble class controlled the land and the commoners had to pay tax and labor in return for the privilege of using it in parts of feudal europe the serfs were tied to their estate and ordinarily had strong rights over the land and worked but they still had to contribute a certain number of days of work for a certain amount of their harvest to their lord per year the fourth theory behind uh, social stratification is ideologies while analyzing stratification one comes across a basic question how does such high degrees of inequalities persist in stratified societies resentment rebellion and occasional attempts of revolution occurs in all parts of the world many powerless and poor people do not simplify do not simply accept their position in the social hierarchy inequality is a major source of social unrest arguably global economic inequality and concern about cultural imperialism are to some extent responsible for international terrorism as ethnic conflict and religious ideologies are in existence use of coercion and oppression to maintain wealth and power potentially reduces the honor 
and esteem of one of the three rewards offered by stratification. Further stratification system that rely mostly on force seem to be short lived. It is the ideology that reinforces the stratification in a society. In many stratified societies, ideologies are based on religion. In this context, we can cite the example of divine right of kings from the feudal Europe. In many ancient civilizations such as the Aztec, the Inca, the Japanese and the Egyptian ruler himself was believed to be a divine or semi-divine being. In traditional India, the beliefs about reincarnation and pollution were so intervened with the caste system that they rendered its inequalities both explicable and legitimate. In ancient complex chiefdoms of Hawaii, there was a marked social distinction between the noble and the commoner class. The nobility was viewed as endowed with a supernatural power called mana. Mana was partly hereditary. And within a single family, the eldest child inherited most of the mana from his or her parents. The highest ranking noble, the paramount chief, was believed to be descended from one of the gods of the islands through a line of eldest sons. This descent gave him the right to rule because he had more mana than anyone in the chiefdom. Other nobles were relatives of the paramount chief and were also endowed with mana. Mana gave the chiefs the power to curse those who were disloyal or disobedient or violated some taboo which further reinforced their authority. Hawaiians believed that prosperity of chiefdom and everyone in its depended on the performance of certain religious rituals held in grand temple. Commoners did not have enough mana to enter a temple. Only priests and nobles perform the rituals. Indeed, to ensure prosperity, everyone in the chiefdom thus relied on the social elite for their well being. The above examples illustrate a few ways religion serves ideological functions in some societies, in modern societies, ideologies are more secular in orientation because effective ideologies must be compatible with people's overall cultural ideas about how their society works. In the United States of America, ideas about the social and economic usefulness of inequality about the fairness of unequal rewards for unequal talents and efforts and about how the well to do achieve their wealth are often in interpreted as secular ideologies. Now let me distinguish between caste and class in both form of social stratification as we know caste is hereditary 
in which person born in a caste cannot change his caste. For example, if person is born in any of caste identified as Shudra like Chamar, Dumar, Mehtar, Bhangi and so on, they cannot be Brahmin. They cannot change their caste. It is based on belief system and religious dogmas. Their occupation is also pre-decided. Even they can't change their occupation at larger extent. For example, the Shudras cannot be priest in temple of any village or town. They cannot practice priesthood and it could not be acceptable if they will do like that. On the other hand, in the societies where there is stratification on the basis of class, a person can achieve higher rank even being born from the parent of lower rank or lower strata. He can also change his occupation or on the basis of his occupation, his class would be decided. In this way, we can distinguish between caste based stratified societies and class based stratified societies. In class based stratified societies, there are chances or more scope of being changed his or her class, whereas in caste based societies, there are limited chances of changing the caste or there is almost no chance of changing anybody's caste. Nobody can claim or accept it as Brahmin if he is born from parents of lower caste. So dear students, now let's come to summarize this module what you have learned regarding social stratification, its definition, types, different theories. As I told you, all human societies from the simplest to the most complex have some form of social inequality. Inequality refers to the degree which culturally valued material and social rewards are given disproportionately to individuals, families and other kind of groups. Rewards in terms of wealth, power, prestige from the basis of degree of, form the basis of degree of inequality. So the social stratification is the form of inequality found in every society. It states the culturally valued material and social rewards are not equally distributed, not distributed evenly. Stratification is different from rank and hierarchy. Rank is the status ascribed mostly on the basis of descent. Hierarchy is the relationship of authority and obedience, superiority and subordination. Stratification refers to inequality based on ascribed that is caste or achieved class that is status. Stratification is mostly based on certain ideologies. In Indian society, as we have seen in this module, there are stratification on the basis of caste. If a person is born in a particular caste, he cannot change his caste. But in class society or where there is stratification on the basis of class, the person born from the parents of lower class, he have opportunity to change his class. But here 
in caste system or the in stratification based on caste a person can't change his caste so this is the basic difference between the stratification based on class and caste so in this module in this way we come to know the definition of stratification types of stratification ideologies and theories on the based on the basis of which that stratification can be defined thank you very much